now we are moving into AWS networking 101. Okay. So when you log into the AWS portal and um, you look at the networking uh, related services there, you will see the, the basic foundation block is obviously the virtual machine or EC2 as they call it. But then obviously they need to provide some level of uh, identity and access management. So those type of um, options are there. So you, you can have a proper access control for, uh, for you to get access to these EC2 instances or applications. Uh, so if you have dev, you can create different tools versus for the product um, or the production uh, engineers in your team. The VPC, we already talked about it. This is your virtual private cloud. This is your definition of, uh, of a data center in the cloud. Storage is, um, is very different as compared to on-prem. So they give you a bunch of different options in the storage space. One is S3. S3 is about accessing the storage using the public IP addresses or uh, fully qualified domain names, right? So that's what they have. Direct Connect, this is what you will see a lot during this presentation. This guy, Direct Connect guy. This is about connecting your AWS to your on-prem data center, your physical data center. Okay, and this is, um, this is a private circuit or private line that you purchase from uh, AWS, okay? Um, you can connect your VPC or Amazon uh, AWS to your data center using regular IP sec tunnel going over public internet, but that's not enterprise grade. It does not give you the, all the, the QS and then the security and whatnot. Route 53 is their DNS system. So you're building your applications, you're building um, different services. You need to provide uh, domain name resolution. So you will use Route 53. Global Accelerator is about um, connecting your uh, remote branches to the closest point in the AWS system. So let's say if you're sitting in Singapore and your, your application is in Virginia, right? So there are two ways for you to connect from, uh, from Singapore to Virginia is one number one is go over the public internet. That's gonna be, you know, uh, it will add a lot of latencies, it could be very slow, or you can use something called Global Accelerate. So that will actually, uh, give you access to an edge, AWS edge in Singapore. And when you're connected to Singapore, then you are basically riding on top of AWS backbone. And they have um, what they call any cast IP, right? So that's how you connect to the closest point and then um, you get access to your applications. CDN is, is their, um, the cloud fund is their CDN service. It's about caching the, uh, the videos and images and the data that you use frequently, right? It's like a caching service, service they have. Okay, so let's go take a look at AWS. So we, we discussed this before. So they have um, different regions, which is basically collection of uh, regional data centers, right? So they have, let's say US East, US West. And then within the region, when you log into AWS, the first thing you will do, you will create a VPC. And when you are creating a VPC, you have to specify a CIDR, C-I-D-R, or some people call it CIDR, okay? So this is what you will create. That's the top level CIDR, and it is regional. So this is important to remember, because now you will notice that when I'll teach you GCP, you will see this is not how GCP works, okay? So this is only valid for AWS. So VPC is a regional construct in AWS. Within VPC, they have AZs. So when you define the, the AZ, at that point you specify the subnet. And the subnet, uh, it should be part of the CIDR that you already created at top level, right? So now you see there is a subnet to AZ affinity because the subnet is mapped to an AZ. And this is what you also find in AWS documentation a lot like, yeah, so this is, um, you know, subnet to AZ uh, affinity there. So that's why you have your virtual machine sitting in AZ and blah, 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 right? So yeah, so they give you the subnet. Now within the subnet, you define or deploy your instances or virtual machines or EC2 or AMI, or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, Amazon wants you to call it instance. So yeah, so that's what it is. 
Okay, so you have defined your instances, but now you need to provide some level of security. So yeah, you can create a security group, which is nothing but just a layer four stateful firewall. So you have source, destination, IP, source, destination port, and then you say allow deny, okay? So you can create a security group, apply it to multiple instances, or you can have one security group per instance, depending on what your use case is. Then they have this ACL concept of ACL, which is a stateless access control list, right? And this is applied at the subnet level. And then there is a route table, and then there is a router. So yeah, so you will see the route table, and um, that's how they're gonna route the traffic out towards the internet or within the same VPC, but you don't have access to this router. It's just there. Okay, so let's talk about different types of gateways in AWS. Okay, so this is again, uh, not, I don't think it's a complete list, but yeah, this is what you deal with in uh, 90 or 95% of the time. So the number one is called internet gateway, okay? So internet gateway is, is something you, you create if you want these virtual machines to have connections to internet, right? And then, this internet gateway again is not a virtual machine it's just a service and it's just running there you just point to it but you don't have visibility into it okay and then they have this virtual private gateway so this is when you want to build an ipsec tunnel to some other location you will use this uh, virtual private gateway or vgw as they call it then they have the nat gateway right so so when you are connecting to internet, um, in AWS, they use something called public subnet and private subnet, and which is again, very much specific to AWS. GCP does not work like that, or even Azure. So here you create a public subnet, and the public subnet is just a regular subnet, but it has a default route pointing towards internet gateway, right? So that's what it is. Well, what about if you have a private subnet? Okay, so if you have a private subnet and you want to go towards internet, then you create this NAT gateway in AWS, okay? AWS TGW, Transit Gateway. It basically provides hub and spoke kind of connectivity for the VPCs in the system. So let's say you have 10, 20, 50 VPCs and um, you want all of them to talk to each other you will connect it with this transit gateway and then um, they will not start talking immediately because you still have to go into the route table and then you need to add the routes in every place. But yeah, so this is their uh, transit solution. VGW or VPN gateway we already talked about. CGW is a customer gateway. In AWS, basically what you do, you create a shell. You create a shell or a definition for the gateway that is sitting on the on-prem side, okay? So that's like a template you create, and then you apply the configuration on your actual physical router or firewall in the on-prem using the template that they provide you. Direct Connect Gateway actually works only with the, when you have Direct Connect, obviously, and it's about connecting uh, multiple regions or to a physical Direct Connect circuit, okay? So, because Direct Connect, like I said before, is a service that you get. It's very region specific, obviously. It's a physical wire coming into your, from your data center into the cloud. So it is per region, but let's say if there is a region in Europe or uh, in Canada that wants to get access to the Direct Connect circuit, they can use Direct Connect Gateway. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture and see how they are placed. So on top we have US West, US East, a bunch of VPCs. They are connected using this AWS TGW. There is a CGW um, on the data center, which is the physical router. And this customer has purchased this Direct Connect link here. And they are connecting this Direct Connect using a transit WIF in US West but there is a need for this US East to utilize this same physical circuit. So they will use this Direct Connect Gateway, right? But this Direct Connect Gateway is, is non-transitive. So it can only send traffic in this direction. It cannot send traffic like this and go on top, right? Cannot do that. 
the, you know, there are limitations there. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. Yeah, the VGW is there. I'm showing you to build this tunnel. The IGW is here if you want to connect to internet. So that's how it is. So let's talk about this AWS TGW a little bit. Uh, this transit gateway is something that AWS announced in uh, November 2018. Yeah, reInvent. Okay. So before that, uh, why the, why it was created in the first place, right? So so let's say you have ten or twenty VPCs, and if you want them to talk to each other, what you can do you can create something called VPC peering, right? But VPC peering is non non transitive, or the VPC is non transitive. So let's say if you have um, let me draw it here so that you guys understand. Yeah. So let's say if you have another VPC here, right? This is your VPC. And um, you connect this VPC here through VPC peering. And then this guy also connected through VPC peering. But this guy here, a VPC two, for example, it won't be able to talk to this VPC N because this won't allow this transitive routing to happen. You have to create the full mesh, okay? So that's, that's the thing. So yeah, for two, three, four VPCs, that's okay. You can create the full mesh. But if you're talking about hundreds of VPCs, it's practically impossible or unmanageable, I should say. All right, so they created this transit gateway so that you can connect these VPCs to this, this hub or transit gateway, and then it can do the transit routing for you. But yeah, like I said, it was recently introduced in 2000, late 2018. So, so you can imagine this, getting into the transit business is not easy. Building this thing is not easy. And at this scale uh, is uh, even harder, right? Okay, so now I need to close this, sorry about that. Okay, so that's the native service. You can attach lots of VPCs and they, they tell you that, you know, the throughput is, is abundant. So don't worry about the throughput. Um, you can create multiple route tables, pretty much like WRF. You create in a, in a core router, uh, different route tables to connect. And um, you attach basically VPCs. So it's just attachment happening in the background. You don't have any visibility or control over it. They do this all themselves. It's very AWS specific, obviously. This is, you won't find it in any other cloud. This is another problem. Uh, yeah, so this is what it is. So now let's talk about some limitations. and. And, and, and what is happening behind the scene. So when you are creating those VPCs, okay, uh, and attaching them to this AWS TGW here, the, the route table management is a headache. Why? Because now you are responsible for programming these VPC routes, right? So that's number one. And worse is that obviously it's not a static environment. You need to have or add more routes to it. So it's gonna be all manual. So you have to do that if, if you are just using the native AWS TGW without Aviatrix, right? And this last piece is again, very important. If you are building a tunnel from this TGW to your on-prem device, you're limited by this 1.25 GB throughput, right? This is IPsec limitation and it's there in each and every cloud. The scalability is a problem. There's only 100 BGP routes per routing table that it support. There's no VPC summarization and uh, does not support any overlapping IP, right? And then when you are about to insert any, any firewall in the path, uh, your performance will be degraded because most of the time they will ask you to build this, this IPsec tunnel to run the BGP on top. And then, yeah, I mean, this is where the, the limitation comes in. So the effective throughput you get when you're inserting a firewall is about 500 or 600 MB only. Okay. So how we actually solve it? So I'm gonna give you a, a teaser here. Obviously we did not introduce the concept of controller, but yeah, this is the Aviatrix controller icon here. We are controlling and managing the AWS TGW. And by doing that, we remove all those limitations you see, right? So we will remove all these uh, routing limitations, the, the initial configuration of routes, the, the updates, uh, if you are connecting over direct connect, the BGP configuration, all that, we take care of that. We will make sure that the entire network is actually correct. So we pro 
provide this network correctness, uh, we will propagate all the on-prem routes to VPC. So don't have to worry about it, right? And any new updates that you are making, it's gonna be done automatically. So yeah, so this is what we do. This is what the challenge that we solve for a lot of customers.